He wondered, how can somebody hate somebody and be evil to that degree that they would take a life, especially in that fashion? Jean had been unfaithful, fathering a child with another woman. There, you have feelings inside of you, feelings of rage, feelings, feelings of anger. That she knew the killer. Numerous cases involving African-American females are often overlooked and rarely gain widespread recognition. The situation of Elisa Jackson, for instance, never garnered the media attention that, in my opinion, she was entitled to. Alicia was found stabbed in her apartment with her two-year-old son as a witness to the entire ordeal. What is even more disheartening about this particular case is that it remains unsolved even after 12 long years, leaving investigators perplexed and labeling it as a puzzling matter with no solutions in sight. But stay woke. Hey guys, I'm Leah Nicole. If you're new, welcome. I hope you're staying safe because times are getting darker and darker. In today's case, I'm really lost for words because it really makes you think twice about who you allow in your personal space. Alicia Jackson was a 25 year old originally from Kentucky, but her case takes place in Columbus, Ohio. Her parents described Alicia as a natural born leader. She had a bright presence about herself that you really couldn't ignore. But before we jump into today's case, I do want to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. If you're anything like me, I take my mental health very seriously. Occasionally, we all face anxiety, sadness, or even grief, especially on this channel. And BetterHelp is the perfect platform to find a therapist. BetterHelp offers therapy online so you can continue therapy from home or wherever is convenient for you. All you have to do is answer a few questions and BetterHelp can match you to a professional therapist in just a few days. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible. And if you don't really fit with that therapist, which is common with therapy, you can easily switch to another therapist at no additional cost. This is without stressing about insurance, who's in your network, or anything like that. Therapy is a very valuable tool for me personally as it helps me with healing and balancing my emotions when I am overwhelmed. So I highly recommend online therapy with BetterHelp to improve your mental health and lifestyle. Click the link in the description or visit BetterHelp.com Leah Nicole to receive a 10% discount on your first month of therapy with a licensed professional specific to your needs. Once again, thank you so much BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video and let's jump back into today's case. She was also very family oriented and will text her family and friends motivational texts every morning. She also had a great relationship with her brother, Trevin, who would always ask her for advice and really depend on her. She was also a great student in high school and very social. She was homecoming queen her senior year. She was a part of orchestra and was on the honor roll. And another interesting thing that stood out to me was that Alicia's classmates wrote in her yearbook that she would make the biggest impact on the world. So you can really tell that people admired Alicia and knew that she was going to have a bright future. In 2003, Alicia graduated from high school and got accepted to attend Ohio State University. Now this was really exciting for Alicia. You're entering womanhood, you're meeting new people, you get to really experience the college life. Alicia went on and majored in architecture, and if some of you guys know, geometry, algebra, and trigonometry all play a crucial role in agricultural design. So Alicia was phenomenal at math and very meticulous. 
While she stayed on campus, she had a great social life, meeting new people, and also attracting the guys. Alicia was known to be very beautiful, you know, she did have some admirers, one of them being Eugene. They met at Ohio State and started dating. Eugene came from a good family, he did very well in school, and he was pretty calm. The relationship seemed healthy, and the parents also supported their relationship as well. Alicia's parents expressed that Eugene seemed like a good guy, a guy that they really could trust with their daughter. In 2007, Alicia graduated from Ohio State and made plans to really stay in Columbus to pursue her master's degree. And Eugene also stayed back also to finish his degree as well. So after they settled down, Alicia found out that she was pregnant. They were both excited to be parents and welcomed their baby boy in July 2010. Alicia began working at a nonprofit and served on board at a local YMCA, and Eugene was finishing up his master's degree. So they were building a foundation together and a family, but their happy home would soon crumble. Eugene had fathered another child within the relationship. Eugene was cheating on Alicia while she was pregnant. And even after that devastating situation, Alicia still wanted the relationship to work. So in 2010, Eugene and Alicia was making plans to move to Dallas, Texas because Eugene had a great work opportunity out there. So they were thinking that could be a great move for their family. Thursday, December 2nd, 2010, Alicia dropped her son off to daycare and was on her way to work. She sent Eugene a text asking him about his plans for dinner because she wanted to make meatloaf and she would have to go to the grocery store after work to get a few things. So after a long day at work, she left, went to pick up her son, and went straight to the grocery store. She went to pick up some eggs to make her meatloaf and arrived at home around 5.30 p.m. She came inside, settled in, put the baby down in his high chair, and started to cook. While she put the meatloaf in the oven, she sat down at the kitchen table and laid out all of her mail and bills that she needed to pay. Eugene wasn't home yet and he planned to meet with a student group to finish some of his courses, so he was going to be home late that night. Now Alicia's mom sent her a text around 5.53 p.m. to see how she was doing and Alicia texted her mom uh, back pretty fast and texted her, hey mom, I'm fine. Alicia's mom then sent her a text back at 5.56 p.m. but she never got a reply back. So we fast forward to 9 p.m. that night and Eugene came home looking for Alicia. He saw his son strapped in his high chair and discovered a gruesome surprise. He saw Alicia on the couch covered in blood. There was blood all over the apartment and the back door of the apartment was open. But things were left the same. Nothing was touched. The meatloaf that she prepared for dinner was still in the oven cooking and her son was in his high chair untouched. Eugene called 911 right away in distress, yelling for paramedics to come and save Alicia. Alicia went to work the morning of December 2nd. She left work early to pick up her son from the babysitters and also to go to the grocery store to get eggs. She said she was running out of eggs, so she told her coworkers that she was gonna leave early. And there's actually a security footage of her at the grocery store, so we know she went. And then it's believed that she arrived home at 5.30 and started to make dinner and started to do her bills. Um, she put Juju in his high chair and let him watch cartoons while she did all the work around the house. Her mom texted her back to, from that and there was no response after 5.56. One of our ideas was maybe that the suspect could have been the one that responded to her mom because like I said before, the text wasn't her usual text message, it was very quick. And then that is where we have the time gap of from the last text from her mom and when Eugene arrived home. We're not really sure what happened in this like two hour gap. Alicia was stabbed more than 30 times in the face, neck, and chest. 
On the 911 call, you can hear Eugene trying to do CPR and also comfort their baby boy who had to witness his mother get murdered. Once paramedics arrived at the scene, Alicia was pronounced dead. Her life was taken away from her, leaving behind her two-year-old son, and no one could understand who would want to kill Alicia and why. When investigators arrived at the crime scene, they knew that this was a personal attack. Alicia had to know the person because the crime was out of rage. Investigators took samples of the blood that was all over the house and the only items missing from the home were two laptops and Alicia's phone. Her purse and personal items were left in the house, so police didn't think it was a robbery. The person that took the electronics didn't want any conversations with Alicia exposed. Police came to the conclusion quick that Alicia knew the person that killed her and she let them inside of her home because there was no signs of forced entry or any struggle. The person that killed her had to take her by surprise or off guard. Investigators did talk to neighbors in the community and they all expressed that they didn't hear or see anything suspicious. Investigators did look at Eugene as being a suspect because most of the time with cases like this, it's either a spouse, husband, or wife that's the killer. But Eugene had an alibi. His professors and some students shared that Eugene was at school during the hours Alicia was killed. So Eugene was ruled out as a suspect. Police wasn't able to pick up any DNA or evidence at the scene. They knew that whoever did this murder planned it where it would be extremely hard for them to get caught. So investigators often hit a dead end trying to find new evidence. They did speak to a few suspects, but it was never helpful. Alicia's family felt like whoever did this to Alicia, she never felt that her life could be in danger. Just minutes away at his home, Alicia's father recalls the night his daughter was killed. You keep wondering, how can somebody hate somebody and be evil to that degree that they would take a life, especially in that fashion, and, and live with themselves? Stabbed more than 30 times. I shared that initially with my mother, and uh, I'll never forget the wail from her uh, in the bedroom. It's one thing to pass away, it's another thing to pass away young, it's another thing to be killed, but it's another thing to be stabbed in the way that she was stabbed and then to ice the cake stabbed in front of her most prized possession. There, you have feelings inside of you, feelings of rage, feelings, feelings of anger. Recently spoke about the murder on a podcast with students of an Ohio high school. He asked what they gathered from the way Alicia was killed. That it was very personal, very personal, very like hate driven. Right. Which would usually indicate that she knew the killer. She would have never let this person into her home with her two-year-old son if she felt threatened. So she had a lot of trust for this person, but it seemed like this person had a lot of hate for her. She was stabbed in her face so many times that you really had to be possessed to inflict so much pain on a person like that. And I wonder if this person was jealous of Alicia. Did Alicia refuse to do something for them? Did they want something from Alicia? But Alicia wasn't a person to be in drama or have any enemies. A funeral was held for Alicia and her family and friends all attended the funeral. Everyone came out to show love and support for the Jackson family. No mother and father wants to bury their child. No sibling wants to bury their best friend. And no child should continue life without their mother. After Alicia was laid to rest, the only concern the Jackson family had was finding the killer who killed Alicia and getting some type of justice. Investigators spent months trying to find out who killed Alicia Jackson. They spoke with so many people that knew Alicia, but would often hit a dead end. 
It was revealed by investigators in 2012 that Alicia's killer had to be a woman. It was believed that the killer intended to disfigure Alicia's face by stabbing her face multiple times. Investigators really believed that this woman had to be from Eugene's past. This person was in communication with Alicia. She knew Alicia's address and planned to kill her for a long time. After years of trying to find answers, Alicia's case went cold, leaving the family without any answers. Meanwhile, the Jackson family remains optimistic. Justice will be served. They can't keep walking life and, and not feel any type of justice or not fit or not feel the consequences for what they did. Hoping someone um, somewhere that. knows a piece of information which will lead police to Alicia's killer. Her younger brother Trevin lost one of his biggest supporters. And I wanted to call her. I wanted to text her and I expected her. I, I almost subconsciously expected her to be there when I was going back home for her her funeral and I had to keep telling myself that no this is her funeral you're going to. Now in his 30s and living in North Carolina, support. Trevin is finally able to bring himself to talk about his sister's death. Definitely the most difficult day I've ever went through. And I remember sitting on a bed in one of the other bedrooms and I had this this vision of Leisha fading off into the distance and she said goodbye daddy I'll see you soon. I haven't told a lot of people that, but it was like, it was final as far as I'm concerned in terms of her being here on this earth. Eugene moved to Dallas with their son and still keeps in contact with Alicia's family till this very day. And I'm sure that's something the Jackson family deeply appreciates because they still have a piece of Alicia with them. The police never had the chance to interview Alicia's son because the family didn't want him to even relive that moment because that's something traumatizing for anyone. Now there's a lot of theories that this maybe was a woman that Eugene maybe used to mess around with in the past. Her motive behind killing Alicia stood really behind the fact that Eugene would never leave Alicia. So she needed her out of the picture. So this woman asked if they could meet up to solve their differences. Alicia, once again, didn't have enemies. So she probably was willing, you know, to let her inside of her home, not knowing her life will be taken away from her. There's other theories that the killer maybe hired a hitman to out Alicia as well. The Jackson family is still very much eager to receive justice for Alicia. I do hope and wish that they could receive some sort of closure because Alicia didn't deserve this at all. And I hate that she has a son without a mother. I really pray that you guys continue to be mindful of the people you keep in your space because you never know their true intentions. I am leaning more towards the fact that this person that killed Alicia Alicia probably did know and felt comfortable enough to let them inside of her home. Now, the reason on why this even happened, it's still very much unknown. Her case has been unsolved for 12 long years. So the Jackson family, they're definitely wanting some closure. And also with um, this case, this case barely got any national attention, really. So that's another thing as well. Um, when a case is just hidden, especially when it comes to like minority cases, it's very hard to find some real answers when there's no real pressure being applied. So hopefully now we can definitely get this case out there to receive more attention. I do want to pray for the Jackson family for really healing and closure and just support because not knowing what happened to Alicia Jackson is still very devastating. Father God, I pray for the Jackson family. I ask you to heal their hearts and provide a never-ending peace for them. I ask you, Lord, that 
what's in the dark always comes to light and that you reveal who is guilty of taking Alicia's life away. I pray that whoever knows the truth comes forward so that this case can finally receive just closure. It's been 12, year, 12 long years and that's just way too long for this case to be unsolved. I thank God for what you're about to do for this family and the peace that you're going to give this family. I do want to pray over the family, Jeremiah 29 verse 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I thank God for what um, he's about to do for this family and the peace that this family will receive very soon. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think about this case and please be careful and stay safe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.